Okay, my friends, this is 60 Minutes. Most people know what 60 Minutes is, a very good news program. They have a lot of interesting things on. He's talking about, on the last minute of the broadcast, about fusion and how important it is. However, fusion that they're talking about is on an industrial scale, very complicated, very expensive, grid-oriented, very vulnerable. I'm talking about walking around something like this where you could just walk around with it like a lunchbox and you could walk in the woods and plug anything you want to want just like you're plugging into this stuff now usb 120 220 european whatever you want now here's what he's got to say and he's right it's li listen to what they say energy the same process the sun uses to create heat and light promises to be clean cheap and nearly unexpendable it produces neither greenhouse gases nor nuclear waste. The breakthrough's practical applications are years, even decades away. But in this season of hope, it sheds a little light in the darkness. Okay. I'm Bill Whitaker. Ha That's Bill Whitaker, and happy Merry Christmas to you, my friend. And um, yes, it does shed a little bit of light, but we need to look at photonic fusion not nuclear fusion it's it's, it's two different species totally t totally different i'm looking at basically cold hold in your hand fusion walk around no possibility of injury it's using strictly light which you get hit by all day long so and and the the focus length is almost instantaneous as they spread apart they come right back together instantaneously so this is the way to go, is a cold fusion, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to explain to you exactly how it's done. It's very simple, and it would take only a month or so to be sure one way or the other whether we can get free energy or not. Okay, this is going to be kind of fun. It really will be. This guy seems very genuous in the fact that he's, he's looking for answers to our global situation of all types. And he's, he's a comedian, and I love that. You know how I laugh a lot. I, you know, life, you can just laugh through it. Why not? But get something done at the same time. Now, he's talking about home, strange home. <laughs> well, I can tell you something. I got some strange homes for him to look into. Now, I would love to discuss something with him. He seems to be willing to be out there. Now, um... Maybe you guys could, could um, Twitter him and so forth and say, will you talk with Roger? I'm going to show you right now. I, I think we may have a solution, but I need somebody to be able to stand up that has a voice. And, and it's people that are, are, are socially accepted. I am not accepted. I'm not just not socially accepted. So I am more or less, you know, people just shut off right instantly because of my mud fossil research, which is all very, very well supported as well. But they, people's minds are very, very capped off at the moment. This is mud fossils. I discovered it, I researched it, and this is what destroys my other research. I research every field. Anyway, let's get into the light research, because I think we can get free energy. I think we can get it within a few months. And if he's really serious, Chuck Nice, we can get we can get together with Neil Tyson because he's he's their buddies. They're on the same t Star Talk show together, apparently. And um, I'd like to be in the mix of it. He seems very interested. I'm sure Neil is. I, I'm sure they just never heard of what I'm talking about. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's see if we can get together. Okay, my friends. Huge, huge, huge breakthrough today. I have been talking about sea moss and high luminosity. Now this is at the LHC, this is CERN Large Hadron Collider. They're upgrading replacement of the hybrid pixel detectors that they were using before to see these things. They're replacing them with radiation hard monolithic CMOS sensors. Exactly what we did seven years ago. Now we didn't have hardened ones, we just had ones in the smartphones and they worked pretty well. Now, they also make the same claim I made, is furthermore, it says that these monolithic CMOS sensors can substantially, I mean way substantially, reduce detector costs. These well-known 
Advantages of CMOS sensor for performance and cost can only be exploited if the particle-particle collisions at the LHC and Large Hadron Collider are hardened, basically is what they say, hardened to be have all this radiation hit them. But that's because right now they're hitting things head on and looking for this. And they're getting chunks of particles that are like gigantic. If you're using light, which we're using, you're getting these tiny little particles. They're not as damaging as what they're talking about having to harden all the CMOS. We're just ex absorbing that radiation right in a, a, a cell phone. And that cell phone was used for five or six years at least doing the experiments basically every day. Rod was using it over and over and over. He loved that thing better than any other phone he used, and he used a bunch of them. And he used the selfie side. Hold on one second. All right, let me see if I can explain what happened here. Rod Warren posted some pictures of light, which I just blew me away because I could realize what was happening based on my understanding of the dipole nature of all particles. And I knew light, I called it atomic vapor in 1970. I said it's got to be a dipole and it's got to be an atomic vapor. And that vapor turns into food. <laughs> Plants grow because of, of light. You don't have light, it doesn't grow. So what does that tell you? It tells me that light is the energy source that makes plants grow. They literally eat light. They eat the light to grow. The more light, the more grow. Simple as that. Now, that started me to understand what Rod was showing was the division of light. So I get a hold of him. I said, Rod, how the hell did you do this, man? And he was just as open and just as kind and humble as anyone could possibly be. Now let me explain to you, because uh, I have exactly the same equipment. I can't do what he did. He's just too talented for me. <laughs> right, but I got all the same equipment, and I, I'll show you how it works. And it's very, very simple. You might be able to do it yourself. And maybe we can get something done here. Because I believe once you separate those two particles, you have raw energy. As I show when it burns the house down, it doesn't move it. But boy, I'll tell you, there's a hell of a lot of energy there. All right, this is going to go into a little bit of a ramble. But it's very, very simple. The double slit experiment is where they, you have a slit here and a slit here. But it's thin. It's like razor thin. And the razor thin slit this way. And then they say all oh, these lap, flap, flap. Well, no, that's not the way it works. What Rod did was he, and this is all he did, he took two finishing nails and he put them right close to together and he figured, well, he'd make a slit, just a single slit, and shoot his laser through that slit. And that's what he did. And this is exactly what he used for a laser. Only he had the metric one. But this is in the United States. But, but it's a GLM-15 Bosch. And he put that laser right up against those. I believe right up against it might have been bad. I don't know. I got to be honest with you. Rod was not a big communicator, and I got to. I can't find him anymore. Um, but he did so much work. It's just a shame that this was not looked into more deeply. I tried as hard as I could try. Rod, I did everything I could do, brother. Now, what he did was he took this exact same phone. I bought all the same stuff he had, and we did the experiments together. But he was the guy. Now. This is an AT&T Galaxy S3. I believe this was like from 2014. And he, Rod, what Rod did was he used a selfie side and put it right up here and took all these pictures right up against the output. Now, everybody asks me, how do I make a Venturi? That's it. That's all it is, is a pinch of the particles coming together. And when they come together, it's no difference than head-on because their fields have to crush each other. They have to crush into each other. This way here, they're crushing, but they can go off this way, go off that way. Very little solid impact head-to-head. -head. They focused them. They made focusing magnets so that they could bring them down to head-on, head-on, like that. Which I, m I mentioned all this stuff to... University of Geneva when I went there for particle physics, I said you should focus them 
and you should use CMOS. And nobody understood any of that. Although University of Geneva was very, very polite to me. They said, this is interesting. We'll follow you on Facebook. And I said, well, can I get involved? And, I, and I'm really, I, it just never went anywhere. But anyway, this is what we got. Now they're into the same thing I told them about, was the CMOS and focusing the beams. So this was long ago Rod did this. And you could do this yourself. Now, how would I recommend you do it? I would take something like this. All right, here's, this is a caliper. Now, it's, interestingly enough, you see that little pinch, pinch there? You see how that angle is set up there? You see it? This is what you need, something like this, to focus your light right through. And it, it's got that angle to it, you see it? That's what you need, something like this. And you could open it up just a hair at a time and get it to just be correct. And you need to play around with this, this thing. Rod did all kinds of stuff. He was working with glass and the, the way the bubbles on the bottom of jars and everything would work. I mean, he was, he was just an event inventor guy. Very, very, very talented. And I, I don't want him forgotten about this. All right, so anyway, that's, that's how I would do it. I'd put something like this right in front of her. Put it right in front of your laser and just open it up to wherever you're getting the best pattern. And I, I know he was doing stuff like this because he was, this. we went on for five years or more. Well, actually, just up until recently. I lost track of him, I don't know, a year or two ago. And I, I they threw me off of Facebook, so I can't get into anybody anymore. And I'm just sitting here in the woods, <laughs> literally. Okay, everybody's seen this about a million times. This is the fixed particle. This is the glowy little Bernie particle. No mass, all the mass. And this is Fermilab, and they talk about the quantum foam, which is all the particles in space. What the hell is this? All badged employees. Well, I'm not a badged employee. <laughs> Director, all hands meeting, all badged employees. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, these are the particles that we found using the experiments I am about to show you. Fixed, never changes size, banger, just solid, all the mass. No mass basically at all just that I can find. And it's a, just a burner. It burns like crazy, no mass. Slams and all the mass. These are the only two particles in my world that exist. And Don Lincoln at Fermi Lab shows the exact same particles right here. That is where it came from, these two particles. And they also claim that the quantum foam exists everywhere in the universe. Empty space isn't empty. But then they go on to support the, the standard model, which does not work. He says it's the most successful theory ever. And they're not, they're not backing down from that. It does not work. There's only two particles. I'll show you those two particles. They make everything, and they come from light, which is atomic vapor. They also talk about the neutrinos. I'm going to show them to you right now. They're black and white, attached together, and then they split. All right, all that stuff I just showed you was right from Fermilab. These are the particles that they... This is Fermilab's picture, once again. Here's our picture, but this is not just a picture. This is actually the, the particles that are, are light from the laser. Now they're starting to come into laser now. And they're going to come into using the CMOS, which we've been using forever. And these are the particles they saw, but we can actually see them. And then we see them manifest, and then we can see them split, which is called fission. And then we have fusion. Here's where we have the fission. The black separates from the white. You just saw it attached. And that's what's called the strong nuclear force. These are gluons, and two gluons together make a photon. Photons bounce away from you. Electrons, which is just one side, which is the, what a gluon is the same thing as an electron. Nobody's ever known about the dark side. Those will burn into you because they want to be fused with something else. These are like semi-stable. And they'll hit something and go boing. All right? And what will they hit? I'm going to show you something, probably now, or maybe I'm talking about nanowires, I think so. And they hit the nanowire, and it vibrates just like a guitar string. Depends on how hard this hits, 
that guitar string, what kind of a vibration you'll get out of it. Just like a guitar. Boing, boom, 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 all that stuff. Same thing with this. It's, it used to be called string theory. It's just nothing more than bounce theory. It, this will bounce back at you and you'll see it as light. We never saw the dark particles because the only thing that bounces back is the light. The dark stuff just grabs together and holds together. And here we are, it is right here. I'm showing it. There is no question what I'm saying is has been done. And here it is right here. Fission, fusion. Right here, I think we can get the raw burn energy of electrons. And if we can, my friend Chuck, Chuck Nice might be able to help people, which is, this is what he said he wants to do. Let's see if we can get somewhere. We need somebody that can open up and talk about this. And I'll be glad to discuss this with Chuck or Neil or anybody that's in a position that can get it exposed. This is luminosity on steroids. Anytime you have luminosity, you have an increase in energy. We did nothing whatsoever other than create a venturi. And I'm going to show you how to do it. You might be able to do it at home. He, Rod did it in his garage, just playing around by accident. It cost him virtually nothing. I'll show you. 